Hey, HTDA, and welcome back to my Satisfactory 1.0 Masterclass, aimed at helping you actually finish the game. Now, in each episode, I'll have one clear goal to work towards that you should be able to complete in a single gaming session or two. Now, today, I'm going to assume you have your coal power up and running, as well as a basic facility that already produces all the Tier 1 materials. The first option you have is simply continue to expand your factory and work towards completing the next phase of the space elevator, pretty much just basically focusing on what you could call the main quest. The second way to continue to develop yourself is using the MAM as well as a couple of options in your hub where you can basically unlock a lot of different things that are not strictly needed to progress through the game, but they do make your life a lot easier. And then last but not least, the third route is mostly the aesthetic route if through the awesome shop. If you have some of these coupons, you can spend them on unlocking new buildables. And although most of these things are purely aesthetics, they do common use in some cases there's a couple of things in here that are pretty useful to have and on top of that making your factory look good is of course always a bonus now in reality of course you're going to want to do all three of those things but there is a certain order that is a lot more efficient than different orders specifically i recommend that you start at this point of the game by focusing a little bit on the quality of life stuff so there's a couple of things that you really want to unlock that will make everything else after that so much easier that if you skip it initially Basically, you'll be thinking later on, why didn't I do this 20 hours ago? For example, picking up enhanced asset security really early on just makes your life so much easier because you actually have more inventory slots, which is always welcome. But if you're going to be running around exploring, the Xeno Basher will actually make it a lot easier to defend yourself in the progress. Aside from that, you'll probably also have collected various amounts of, well, random collectibles you find across the map like Merce Sphere, Summer Sloops as well as remains of different creatures. These random items al allow you to unlock various things in the map and some of them are useful some of them a little less so let me walk you through what you really want to get early on. If you killed more than a handful of these alien creatures that are walking all over the place then you can unlock alien protein and you can then unlock the alien DNA capsule that you can craft from their remains. Once you've done that what you really want to go and pick up is the inflated pocket dimension. This will increase your inventory by 6 slots, which is massive and it costs almost nothing to unlock. The rest of this technology tree isn't super important. If you want, you can pick yourself up a gun. I've actually barely used this ever because, well, the Xeno Basher that we also just unlocked is just fine in killing pretty much everything in the game. But if you like some gunplay, then you can pick that up. Uh, just keep in mind that you also need to carry around ammunition so it does clutter your inventory a little bit. On top of that there's the inhaler which allows you to heal yourself. Quite nice in a pinch if you're doing some exploring and you drop off a cliff or you get attacked by creatures. But all in all this is not really a combat game. So if you're getting yourself killed then you can always just walk back, respawn or well you should probably be not be getting killed in the first place. The Mycelia tree is also something you should explore pretty early on because it allows you to unlock fabric and then in turn allows you to make a parachute on top of also being able to expand your tool belt. You only need to craft a single parachute that is not a consumable and you just put it on your back. Now once you do that, whenever you jump off something you press spacebar again, your parachute will unfold and it makes it a lot easier to get around high and low places. And on top of that, of course, it means you're no longer going to be falling to your death. You can get mycelia from pretty much anything that is not the typical tree or bush. For example, you can get it from these cactus looking things in the rocky desert. Next, a very useful thing on the list to unlock is the blue power slugs or more specifically the power shards that you can make from them. This will allow you, once you unlock the overclock production as well, to actually overclock your productions, basically getting more stuff from a single building than you would normally get from them. On top of that, it also allows you to unlock slug scanning, which makes it a lot easier to actually find them. In order to do that scanning, you can go to the equipment workshop and you can make yourself an object scanner. With the object scanner equipped, you can press your left mouse button and select what you want to scan for, so for example, power slugs. And it will tell you if you're going in the right direction. So for example, right now you can see it's uh, getting me zero bar, so I'm going into a wrong direction. If I turn around, there's a slug over there. You can see it is um, showing me a larger and larger bar the closer I get. So it's an easy way to track them down all by yourself. Now this might be obvious to some people, but a lot of people, including myself, make getting around in this game way too complicated. So what you can just do is get yourself a ramp, 
use the um, zoom uh, zoom mode and then just build yourself a nice little highway to wherever you need to go on whichever mountain you need to reach so yeah just don't try to climb mountains in this game just get it easy, done the easy way if you want to start overclocking a building, all you need to do is make some of these power shards by finding any color of slug. The higher color of slugs basically give you the same power shards, so you just get more of them for each slug. And if you double click on one of the shards or if you drag them in, you can start overclocking them. And depending on how much you want to overclock, you will need to have one, two or three of these power shards to go in. Now, rather than using the slider over here, you can just say, for example, I want 30 of these per minute. Uh, press enter then and then it will automatically shift the overclocking to that required percentage just as important however is the fact that you can underclock as well so for example you can set it to two thirds speed or a round number and that will mean that if you don't have enough supply line coming in you underclock a building that building is not going to require more power than it actually needs in order to make this amount so you can basically save on power and avoid some power spikes in your facility it's also worth noting that for underclocking you do not need power shards, so you can do this wherever you want, how many times you want. This is especially useful with certain types of production, for example with the limestone production that is turning our limestone into concrete. I have two miners, each producing 60 limestone per minute, but if you look at the recipe, it is 45 per minute per constructor. So I actually have two constructors operating at full speed, and then I have a second constructor now operating at 66% or 67%. And that means that it's a perfect ratio between the inputs and the outputs now. Now the next thing on the list that you want to unlock as soon as possible is the quartz tree or at least the right half of it. Now in order to do that you're going to need 10 quartz to actually unlock the first node and then 20 more quartz to unlock silica. Now hopefully you've already find a little bit of that and if not you should go out and explore. But as soon as you do you are going to find that you need quite a bit of silica which is the thing that you make from quartz to unlock both the inflated pocket dimension so again six inventory slots additional that's super useful but specifically what you want are the blade runners now the getting the quartz there's no way around it you'll need to go out and mine some but getting the silica after that you can either do that by mining a node but there's an easier way to get that if you want to kind of speed that up and that is by setting up a very simple awesome sink setup like this. Just an awesome sink and a couple of storage units attached to that. We've already unlocked the awesome sink in tier 1. And all you need to do is throw in some items that you don't need that many of but that you are producing non-stop. Things like concrete, copper sheets, copper wire, whatever you want basically. You can just use this as basically a, a trash heap where you put in stuff that you have a lot of but you don't need that many of at the moment. By doing so you will start collecting some fixed coupons. It's also worth noting that you can put those alien DNA capsules in here as well and actually give you a lot of points. So even though I just started this up, as you can see I am already getting quite a few coupons out of that and the alien DNA is stacking up really really quickly as well. So you can just see, see the coupons shooting up while I'm talking. Now, of course, there's nothing stopping you from hooking up the sink directly to your production facilities. Just remember that that means all of that stuff is actually going to be des destroyed. So don't hook it up to any production line that you actually need a lot of. Because, well, you don't want to be running back to your storage, finding out it's completely empty because everything was put in the sink. And then have to wait around for like an hour or so to get a reasonable amount of materials back. Do keep in mind that once you're placing down awesome things, they do cost up quite a bit of power, at least early on, comparatively to whatever else you're building, so, well, use them sparingly. Just in case you don't know, you actually open up the sink and you get your coupons by printing them over here. Then if you go to the awesome shop, you will notice that you can't just unlock a lot of awesome buildables in there, but you can also just get some free materials. Specifically, you can just say, well, let's add a couple of stacks of silica to my cart so I can make my blade runners as well as my pocket dimension upgrades. The blade runners go in your legs and allow you to move a lot faster and jump a lot higher than you did before. Okay, so now with the relatively little effort, we've doubled our speed, doubled our offensive capabilities. We can now actually jump off cliffs and we can scan for valuable resources. And on top of that, we've doubled our inventory space. So that's a lot of good things to have as early as you can. Now it's time to start exploring a bit and get some more of those resources. Now before you leave, I do recommend that you set up a production facility for modular frames if you haven't done so yet. 
It doesn't need to be fancy because honestly you don't need that many modular frames, but you can just hook it up to the existing reinforced iron plate production and any remaining iron rod production and then just put both of those belts into a single assembler and then connect that to a storage box and you're good to go. Remember that while exploring you'll be coming across a lot of dangerous creatures and most of them won't attack you if you put them to passive. This is a setting in the gameplay option so you don't need to have any special mod or anything like that enabled for that. It doesn't even affect your achievements so if you don't want to be bothered by hostile creatures just turn them off. Similarly you might want to put on the keep equipment setting so if you die at least you don't have to run back to get all your stuff. While you're exploring, you also want to keep an eye out for these crashed drop pods. They will have a lot of materials just laying around, uh, around them and, well, picking them up is just free stuff. However, more importantly, every single drop pod has something in it as well. And in order to open the drop pod, it varies a little bit what you need. Sometimes it's materials, sometimes it's power, but it's always worth opening them up. Opening them up will always give you one of these hard drives and you can use them in the MAM in order to unlock new things. One of the high priority things you're trying to find while exploring is a Caterium node. Now there's not going to be a lot of these around, so unless you're using a map, you might have a hard time finding them, but they tend to be in pretty inhospitable places like on top of cliffs and stuff like that. Now the reason I like the Rocky Desert, or at least one of the reasons I like the starting location is, look, there's our main base, so there's actually a rich Caterium node pretty close by where we started out. You're going to want to mine some of the ore, then make some of the ingots and then unlock the quick wire and make some of those. Now remember that you don't need to run back and forth to your base, you can just build a man wherever you are and use the items right in that one and once you're done with that, delete the man again. One single pure Caterium node will feed three of these smelters, although you will need to underclock the last one to 67%. And four of these constructors making the quick wire, although again you will need to underclock the last one, which will be underclocked to 33%. So in case you're wondering what's going on here with these splitters and mergers, each of these smelters actually produces a little more than one of these constructors can handle. So I'm actually splitting off the production from the ingots and then merging that with the second one, but then splitting it off again, just so I can make sure it's actually balanced between all of these constructors. Now, because of the high production speed of the quick wire, it's called quick wire for a reason, I guess, we actually have two full belts of quick wire coming out of this. So yeah, um, we actually need two Mark II belts and to handle all of that. One of them here is going to go into this storage depot so we have easy access to a lot of quick wire really, really quick. And well, the second belt might as well just go into a sink for now. We're going to use that later on, but for now it's a very easy way to get a lot of those coupons and that will help us make our bases more pretty. With the quick wire available, you can now unlock Power Poles Mark II, which are pretty awesome actually, because they allow you to connect up to seven cables to a single power pole, which makes it a lot more flexible than the Mark I version. They are also pretty cheap to produce, so even if you just bring a couple of stacks of quick wire with you, remember this actually stacks up to 500, just like the normal wire does, you can build hundreds of these poles without having to come back to this specific location, so you don't need to worry about connecting this to your main base. You can also unlock the zip line, which allows you to do exactly what you think it does and go between your bases by using your own power poles. Now it's not super fast and it's a little bit finicky and I don't know, it's not the most relaxed way of traveling in my opinion, but still it's quite fun to do and it's a free unlock. However, the main reason I wanted to go for Caterium straight away is the smart splitter. This thing is awesome. However, in order to unlock it, you're going to need some AI limiters. And in order to get those, well, you're probably going to have to handcraft them. You could also automate them. There's nothing wrong with that if you happen to have copper ore nearby, but I don't. So I just spent a couple of minutes handcrafting the ones I need and then unlock the smart splitter. The awesome thing about the smart splitter is, well, that it's smart. You can actually set the different outputs to either not do anything or uh, export specific items. So you could even make a belt with different types of items on it and then split them off depending on where you need what to go. However, the most important use, at least I believe that these things have, is that they have an overflow setting, which means that if the other belts are stuck or backed up, then, then this output will be used to put the remaining items on, but only if the other belts are actually completely backed up. 
What this allows you to do is kind of set up a very awesome looking mall like I have over here where you're collecting all the items that you're producing in the storage box for production purposes and stuff like that, building, etc. But if any of these boxes become full, and they will, then you have a smart splitter here that is set to overflow the items in onto a uh, lifted merger over here and this belt is actually connected to all the other storage units as well so any of these storage units that is full will put its belt stuff on this belt and then that belt goes right into a sink now of course depending on how many items you're actually overflowing the um, sink belt as, as i tend to call it might actually get completely full but still at least you're making sure that none of your production is going to come to a complete standstill now, if you're a little bit of a neat freak like I am, you could also combine this mall setup I have over here on both sides with uh, two total sinks with your hub and some general crafting things like the MAM, your awesome store and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need to do that and I think you will see in the next episode that this is kind of outdated as well. But still, it's quite fun to do and honestly, if you're not having fun, then why are you playing the game? You will have noticed that I ignored the sulfur technology tree for now because, well, honestly, we need quite a few materials there that we don't have access to yet. And I also skipped the alien technology tree. However, this is probably the most important one in here. However, again, we need a couple of materials that we don't quite have just yet. But don't worry, that is definitely going to come up in the next episode because this is actually new to the game and it is super awesome, specifically the dimensional depot but once again we don't have all the resources for that just yet so we'll need to do some more work before that everything we've done in this episode so far is meant to make our lives easier moving forward so we can move around faster we can sort of fly across the map we have access to smart splitters now to better power poles we have a mall organized and we have a lot of production going in our sink now so you can see i'm producing a steady flow of about 2700 points per minute which is not quite a lot yet mostly because i just relocated all my storage units so it's actually going to come up a little higher in a bit but you can still see this is infinite production of points and whatever i'm going to do next i will be collecting more and more points along the way getting free coupons as i go when it comes to these points, there's actually a couple of things in here that actually do make your life easier, at least if you want to design nice looking factories. So I can recommend pretty much everything in the management tab because all of this just makes building belts, conveyors and stuff like that a lot easier. The floor hole lifts make anything that goes through the floor look really good. And once you get to the walls, there's also things like conveyor walls where you can actually have your belts go through the wall without having to leave open the entire section or have the wall, uh, conveyor clip through the wall. I would also recommend that you pick up either the concrete or the asphalt or both because that just makes your floors look a lot better. And when it comes to making better looking ramps, I really like the double ramp set. It's pretty much the same as those triangles you had before, but they look a lot more natural and more connected to the actual building. Ladders are actually quite useful for both exploring as well as getting around your factory easy. And metal pillars actually, or concrete pillars for that matter, make it a lot easier to make nice decorations on your factory without a lot of work. Uh, the same actually holds for catwalks or walkways, but these are a little bit more expensive so you might want to pick them up later on. And last but not least, you should probably also pick up the coffee cup just because it's awesome. All the things combined that I just recommended to you should cost you about 40 coupons to all together. So that's actually not that much and that leaves you a lot of space to just grab whatever you think looks nice after this. And then finally, hopefully you came across a couple of those crash sites and you've picked up some of these hard drives. Now, once again, you can use these hard drives actually in your MAM and you can scan them for alternate recipes. Now, every hard drive takes a while to scan, which is why I left it to the end, because in the meanwhile, you can't actually unlock anything else. So you don't want to do this while you're still uh, quickly trying to upgrade yourself like we've done in the earlier part of this episode. Uh, once you do get one of these hard drives resource, you will actually unlock the option to pick between several different alternative recipes. And it's a little bit... Uh, hard to tell you what to pick because it will be different for every one. It's randomly generated. It will always relate to things you can actually already produce. So basically, take a look at it. There is plenty of hard drives in the game to get every single alternative recipe in the game. So you don't have to worry about missing out on something. If you don't pick it now, you will get it over later. So yeah, long story short, just see if you find anything useful. And 
remember you can always just use the standard recipes as well so you're not going to go wrong in that regard in any way all right so that was a massive amount of upgrades that was an, actually quite a lot of progress even though it doesn't feel that way because we didn't actually make any progress towards the completion of phase two but then once again this will make our lives a lot easier in the long run so i hope you still found this useful if you're still here you're awesome and i do hope to catch you in the next one because then we're going to be dealing with steel <laughs>